Hello, this is Tom from antipoton.com. Uh, I'm answering a question from a friend at work who asked it. I don't know if this is going to be enough time, just a few minutes to explain this. It's kind of a complicated question. He wanted to know how did matter in the universe kind of like appear? You know, where, where did it come from? The process is called nucleogenesis. Well, there's actually a bunch of different types of genesis, but uh, we'll stick with nucleogenesis. That's good enough. That 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 that, that would that would explain where atoms came from, per, pretty much. Um, to put this short and sweet and to the point, you might consider taking all matter in the universe and dividing it up into two different sets. There are the light nuclei. That's hydrogen which is, uh, you know, a proton and an electron, sometimes a neutron. And there are... That, that goes all the way up to about iron or so, which has an atomic number of... Oh, what the heck's... Uh, is it 20... I think it's 26. Remember, I told you, it's all off the top of my head. So anyhow, you got all these little light nuclei, you know, stuff like cesium and carbon and, you know, all that sort of stuff, the basics. And then you have heavier things... Things that are above iron. You get all the way up to like uh, uranium and plutonium and americonium and blah, blah, blah. All these humongous atoms that can have hundreds of neutrons and protons. Big, 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 big things. I'll go into depth later about what an atom is and how much stuff is in an atom. So I kind of... Maybe I'm jumping the gun here. You might want to already know what an atom is. But eh, it's not too complicated. All you need to know is that it's a, a fundamental building block of things, and it's made of a proton and, and an electron and sometimes mostly a neutron. Anyhow, to make a long story short, stars typically have very light nuclei in them. Like hydrogen, they have light atoms, like uh, uh, hydrogen and helium. And, and, and to give you an example, when hydrogen is fused together under incredibly high amounts of energy, it produces helium and a couple extra neutrons that fly off, carrying energy with them. To make these atoms stick together to make bigger atoms, what you're doing is you're, you're squeezing them so, so tightly together with so much pressure that they can overcome the repulsive force of their electrons, because electrons that float around the atoms kind of like keep them apart. See what I mean? So you got to get past that. Think about two magnets. If you put the negative sides together, they repel each other. Well, you've got to overcome that, so you use heat. That's how fusion works. It's called fusion. You fuse two things together, you get something bigger. Uh, hel uh, helium and helium can combine to get, uh, create, I, I think, cesium is maybe next off the top of my head. But anyhow, so stars will start making these things. They produce larger and larger atoms, but after a while it starts requiring more and more energy to do this. Eventually, about the time you hit atomic number, I think, 26, which I believe off the top of my head is iron, you start to need a little bit more energy than is coming out of it, per se. You don't get enough to actually do it. So the point of the matter is, after about iron or so, a star is no longer able to make things like that. It blows up or, or becomes a red door for whatever. The point is, uh, all, that, uh, all, all, of that, uh, uh, all of those particles and things, all those atoms are, are blasted out and they get lost out in the universe. And they make the water that you see on Earth, you know, and uh, oxygen and all that sort of thing. So th that's actually not terribly complicated to understand, but here's a little bit har uh, harder of a question for you. How does uranium exist? Where does plutonium come from? Well, plutonium comes from Neptunium-239 and some protons and neutrons. But anyway, um, the heavy stuff exists as a result of one of three possible uh, 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 creations. The first one is a supernova. A supernova uh, occurs generally when a star goes nova, which was uh, kind of a large burst of energy, but a supernova typically blows the star to pieces, or at least blows a large portion of it to pieces, shooting matter and debris out everywhere. Supernova happens when a star becomes uh, incapable of holding what's in it. It, it, it's, it. it doesn't have enough energy inside it to hold, uh, to, to, to hold its um, uh, fusion going, so it starts to, to collapse upon itself because of its gravity, and then that creates a hotter amount of fusion, and that produces a burst of energy and blasts all the, energy, all the uh, matter off of the star. But the point is it explodes. And under those incredible amounts of energy, you, you get all these heavier particles that shoot out every direction. Why do I keep calling them particles? They're atoms. Anyway, the point is, all these heavy atoms, and, well, yeah, particles too, they all fly out, 
And and you, you, you occasionally will get some heavier metals and materials out of that. But more likely you'll end up with two things called rapid capture and slow capture, which is R capture and S capture. Amazing names. Anyway, rapid capture and R capture are, are slow capture. They occur when high or, in slow's case, low energy um, protons and neutrons bombard the nuclei of a lighter atom called a seeding atom. And what happens is you have this lower energy, lower order, lower size, whatever, atom. A little tiny thing like a sodium is a good example. And a neutron comes flying in or a proton smacks right into it and makes it larger. I mean, it's pretty much that simple without getting into the complicated uh, explanation of probability densities and how it's actually able to trickle up through the... Um, into the atom during the weak nuclear effect. But anyhow, basically put the, the, the little tiny particles flying away from the sun are capable of sticking together, kind of like glue, and becoming a bigger particle. And they can only do this in certain scenarios, when they, when they have enough energy or there's enough weak uh, nuclear effect uh, in, uh, allowing this to happen. Well, this is like the short answer. I know this is sort of weak. But my, my site divides everything up into pretty much uh, three categories. Me ranting about something. Me going into depth about something with a little bit more of a, a better, uh, more formulated answer about how something works. Or, in this case, me quickly answering a question with the answer <laughs> without a lot of a, a, a thought to it ahead of time, which is why everything's so uh, dis, dis, disjointed and quick. But that's a basic uh, explanation of where all the matter and, and everything comes from. Uh, well, not matter, but atoms. I should probably put out another video that explains how matter exists, not just how complex matter, such as atoms and so on, occur. But anyhow, um, to anybody out there who heard this and wants to comment about the fact that I'm a little bit weak on some of the things I've explained about, I did not get into hadrons, baryosynthesis, or anything like that because, um, well, that might be beyond the scope of the answer to my question to my friend. And as for my friend, that's the answer to your question. Ask another one if you like. I love questions. All right, well, bye-bye.